listen. Just actively listen to the things that they're saying and be very visual because sometimes um, what they're saying is not coming out verbally. You know, it's coming out through actions. It's coming out through body language and just be aware. And, um, and when they do come to you and say, this is what I want to do, you know, try to be supportive in every way, even if it's something that you don't necessarily, um, believe in, or if it's something that you doesn't necessarily, uh, feel like they, they are going to pursue, you know, 100%, you know, allow them that opportunity and, um, and then go from there. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey, Lee and Miss Grace, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Thank, thank you for having us. <laughs> thank you for having us. <laughs> Absolutely. So I like to start off with every conversation, just talking about how I come to know the person I'm having a conversation with. And Haley and I actually met at the Buy Black Friday Marketplace here in Houston, Texas. A couple of years ago, we were vendors at the marketplace and I was there selling my book, my books and my t-shirts. And the way that the marketplace was set up, my table was a couple of tables behind Haley. So it was like her back was towards me. So I just saw this cute little, you know, teenage girl up talking around, talking to people, you know, didn't really know what she was selling. I was just like, oh, I'm gonna have to go over there and check out the table. Mom was sitting there at the table too. I just figured that, you know, daughter was there helping mom out, right? I get over to the table and realize, wait a minute, no, Haley is the entrepreneur, it's the businesswoman over here. I was so, so, so impressed with Haley. Um, she has a cosmetics line. She has her own nonprofit. And now she's an author. Um, at the time, you hadn't written your book just yet, right? At the time, a couple of years ago. Yeah, so cosmetics line, had her own nonprofit. And I just sat there and talked to an amazing young lady, which is why I wanted to have her here on a podcast today. Her nonprofit covers sickle cell, which is something that hits home for me because my husband has sickle cell. That's something that I have shared on the show before. Uh, my husband has sickle cell, so that's something that we battle with. So the fact that this young girl, you know, young woman started a nonprofit for sickle cell, it just really like blew my mind. So from that point forward, um, I started following Haley across social media. And Miss Grace, I feel like I'm watching her grow up. <laughs> like she has grown up and done so much in these last couple of years. And I'm like man, I got to have her on the show because she can teach us grown women a thing or two, for sure. <laughs> yes. So Haley, please start off telling us, you know, when did you get into entrepreneurship? Well, I got into it because I also see my mom's also an entrepreneur. So I seen her work and hustle throughout her whole life and being the entrepreneur that she is. And I want to be able to do that for myself. And also I wanted to have a backup plan because I used to model, well, I still model an app when I was four and five. And I wanted a backup plan because not a lot of models and, and actresses always work out in the future. So I always, I love getting my makeup done. So I was doing the research and I seen lip gloss because I, at the time I wasn't that tall. And most models are tall to do runway. So I wanted to have a backup plan for that. And so I was doing, when I was doing the research, the lip gloss came up and then I got to do how do you make it. Then I went to the beauty supply, got the things. And my mom seen that I was putting a lot of work into it. So she invested in me and Haley Kisses came apart. 
Wow. You sound so mature and grown. Like, I don't even know grown folks that will really like break it down like that. Like, yes, I'm in the modeling business, but I know that, you know, this is, may not be a long term thing. So let me come up with a backup plan. Like, Miss Grace, you had to be so proud of Haley. Very proud. Yeah. And the fact that she looks at you for an example, that speaks a lot, you know, towards you as well. And just, you know, having self-awareness, because I think a lot of parents, mine's included, I'm not a parent yet. So I know my mom for sure. You know, um, I know a lot of parents, you know, beat themselves up about what it is they're, they're not showing or not doing for their child when in actuality, all you have to do for the most part is just be yourself. Because they're right. watching what it is that you're doing, and they're going to mimic that, the good and the bad. So if you're just embracing who you are, then you're literally showing your child how to do the same. And I think that this is a perfect example. Thank you. Yes, I never wanted her to have to leave out of the home to have a role model. And so therefore, what she sees is what she gets, and she gets the 100% truth of reality over here. So um, there's no surprises, she's being prepared and this is the way we live our life. So she knows nothing but this. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, I grew up in the projects right outside of Chicago and you know, everything happened in the in the ghetto, everything that you can imagine, gang violence, prostitution, all of that. And so when I left to go to college, I decided to be the role model for my sisters and brothers because we didn't have that. We just didn't have that. So the fact that you made it a point for your daughter to see a, mo a role model within the home, I think that's amazing. And I think that's something that a lot of parents strive to do and feel like they're failing at when all they have to do it's just be themselves. Set a goal, whatever your goal is, whatever your vision is for your life, go after that, pursue that. And that's actually setting a role model for your child. So I think that's amazing. So how do you prevent yourself from losing yourself and losing your identity, you know, with supporting Haley? Because Haley has a lot of things going on, like I mentioned before. So how do you stay true to who you are? Because I know a lot of parents tend to live vicariously through their children. Well, what I normally do is I have to get me time in. Mm -hmm. And so although my schedule is pretty much surrounded by her schedule, but the time that I do have, I make sure that I go get massages. I make sure I go have drinks with friends. I make sure I travel with just me and my friends and not me, Haley, and friends. And so, you know, I have to put a balance there, even though it's more tilted on the end of her, but I also have to make time for myself because if not, I would go insane. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that's hard to do sometimes. So do you, do you have like a calendar system or something like that? <laughs> well, I look on my calendar and I see how full it is with her events. And then I just let my friends know that, Hey, I'm available on this day, this day, this day. Um, so y'all going to schedule something. Can y'all please keep in mind that I'm only available at these times on these dates. And, um, everybody's very supportive of it, um, because they are supportive of Haley as well. And so, um, we just work as a team. Everybody around me is, is my whole support team and they make sure that I get out, you know, just like last night. And I was with Haley with her basketball game Thursday night, Friday night, all day Saturday from morning to evening. And my friend was like, no, you're going to have to get out and get at least two hours in of girlfriend time. And that's what we did. And I was back home early and it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love the fact that you are honest with people and just letting them know, hey, I'm full, 
these are the days and the times. So please schedule something during these particular days and times. It's so crazy because most of us don't do that because we're so afraid of what other people are going to say or being left out that we put that burden on us when in actuality, all we just really need to do is just give people, you know, our flexibility, let them know um, what it is that we need. So I love the fact that you have a support system that supports you and Haley, you know, and that starts with really just being vocal and just saying what it is that you need, what you can, you know, and cannot do what's difficult and what's not. So kudos to you for doing that because, you know, a lot of my mom friends, they just try to do everything and be everything all the time. And I know there are a lot of moms out there that's really battling with that because they just feel as though that they need to be super mom. But super right. mom, but being a super mom is a part of is all but also asking for help helps you to be a, a super mom, air quotes, if you will. Right. So kudos exactly. to you for that. So Haley, do you think that you have officially grabbed and understand what your purpose is, or do you think you're still figuring it out? I'm still figuring it out, but my purpose is like I'm not here to stand. I'm here to stand out. I'm not here to fit in. And so, well, a lot of people always tell me that and be a businesswoman, but I'm still grasping everything that was my purpose to be here and what I'm supposed to be doing on this world. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. Um, I wish more kids can have that same mindset, you know, because you said something really key that you're not trying to be like everybody else, that you want to stand out and purpose makes us stand out. And I think a lot of grown folk <laughs> don't embrace their purpose because it sets them apart from everybody else. And most of us are trying to search for validation. And the way that we do that is by just going with the flow and being what we air quotes normal and like everybody else, right? Because they just want to fit in and be validated, if you will. So the fact that you already have the mindset <laughs> at a young age, um, that you're okay with standing out, I think that's amazing. And that says a lot to, you know, your parenting, Miss Grace. Kudos Thank to you. you. Giving you a whole bunch of kudos in this conversation, girl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and what age did you see the entrepreneurial drive in Haley? Like, what age did all this start? Well, as far as entrepreneur, I believe she was 10. Mm. around 10 and a half 11 years old um but I knew ever since she was like one two years old that she was something special she was gonna be a star she was just gonna stand bright amongst you know her peers um and it was always confirmed by other individuals that were just strangers that would just walk up to me and tell me she belongs on tv oh this young lady is so special and so um it was like okay okay and so when you get to a point of you continue to hear it all the time mm -hmm. and so i began to just put her in everything that she would speak of that she wanted to do whatever her desire was i made sure that i supported it and so when she came to me and told me that you know she wanted to start her own business as far mm -hmm. as the lip gloss line I was like, hmm, okay, I'm willing to invest. However, you're going to have to show me that you're serious about it. And this is something that you really want to do because not only is this going to take a lot of time, this is going to take a lot of money. The money I can get back, but the time I cannot. So if this is something that you really want, show me. And that's what she did. She said, Mom, take me to the beauty supply. And I found that I need to get these different things in order to make lip gloss. I said, okay. So I took her. She made different colors and she came to show them to me. And so I said, okay. So that's when I went, found a consultant and said, well, let's do it. Wow. And that's been our path ever since. That's awesome. So, Haley, you what, five years in the game? Are you 15 now? 14, 15? I am four years in the game. Yes. Yes, ma'am. About four years. That's awesome. So has there been any ideas that Haley has come to you about that she really didn't show any initiative <laughs> on? 
yes. <laughs> um, and which was what, like softball, okay. soccer, things like that. And um, but I'm the type of parent if you come to me and you say this is something that you want to do, um, you can't quit mid season or you can't quit. You know, when it gets tough, you know, now once it's over and you decide you don't want to do it again, then I'm good with that. But I wouldn't have never allow her to quit. And so she had to see everything through. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You know, that's a great way of teaching your child follow through and, you know, getting them used to successes and failures at an early age. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of kids... When they get everything that they want, they don't necessarily know how to deal with rejection when they become an adult. So I think Haley is getting a really good um, uh, dose of that or learning that early, if you will, by being an entrepreneur. Because being an entrepreneur, uh, an entrepreneur is not easy. It's a tough road. So, but yeah. it seems like you've been handling it pretty good. So how's it been for you, Haley? Just being an entrepreneur overall. Being an entrepreneur also takes up a lot of time and time management. So that's been like the hardest thing for me is just keeping up and managing my time, being an entrepreneur and everything else I'm doing is like dealing with school, schoolwork, grades, and then after school activities. It's just, it's a lot to handle sometimes when you're managing, especially at a young age. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you're doing a great, it's from the outside looking in, you're doing a great job. And you already talked to us a little bit about um, the inspiration behind your cosmetics line. Talk to us about the inspiration behind your nonprofit and you authoring your first book, because I think the inspiration and the, the purpose behind it is also, I think is probably what's keeping you determined and driven. And I think that's amazing as well. So let's talk about, talk about that for a minute. My, my inspiration behind my book and also my nonprofit is my grandmother mm-hmm. and uh, dealing with sickle cell because she passed from sickle cell. And I seen the struggles that she went through, but she had a, a good support team, a system, me, my mom, my grandpa, my whole family. And some people don't have that. So I just want to bring awareness to it because not a lot of people know what sickle cell is. Not a lot of people know who's affected by it. And then a lot of black people don't know what it is and it affects the black community the most. And so I just want to bring awareness to it or teach people what it is, especially kids at my school or kids that I just hang around, didn't know what it was. So that's why I came out with my nonprofit covered by the blood ink just to bring awareness to it and then spread everything that that knowledge that I know about it and then my book is able to it's our journey through me and my grandma's journey through sickle cell it pretty much breaks down what sickle cell is also telling through a story that people that are kids they be able to read the book and people that's just lack minded of what sickle cell is Mm -hmm. I think that's amazing and you're absolutely right it does affect the African-American community the most and a lot of us don't even know about it and to be completely honest I've heard of sickle I had heard of sickle cell when I met my husband but I didn't really know what it was I didn't really know anything about it and he told me that he had sickle cell when we first started dating and I just had the mindset of okay well okay that's that's cool you know because I was just naive about the about the disease and so we started dating fell in love got married and so once we moved in then that's when it really kicked in when I started to really understand (laughs) what sickle cell is and then that's when I started to do my research behind it you know and I went and got tested to see if I had the trait you know because by him having a disease if I had the trait you know it would determine whether or not our kids would have the disease and the trait like it's a lot that goes into it it's I mean it's a lot and you know we go through um you know his um uh, crises together so you know I'm learning his mess and things like that so it's a big deal it's a big deal. So having your your nonprofit is is amazing because we yes. do need to bring awareness to to the disease. We do. So cuz I guess the grandmother was your mom, Miss Grace? Yes, and I have the trait. Mm. So I was educated from it seemed like day one of me being on earth. <laughs> and my mom always you know, drilled into me, you know, when you meet someone, 
first question, what is your name? What is your sickle cell status? And so she never wanted me to bring a grandchild into the world that suffered the way she suffered. And so she was just always adamant about knowing, you know, the sickle cell status, me knowing the sickle cell status of anybody that I was, you know, dating. And so it's just been an education, you know, and seeing the struggles and understanding what a crisis is at a very young age um, and just being aware. And so Haley got an opportunity to experience that as well, being that her and her grandmother was so very close. Mm -hmm. And um, she just wanted to do something to help and assist because you you feel helpless because really there's nothing you can do but sit there and watch you know your loved one go through the pain mm -hmm. absolutely you know my husband was adamant about not bringing children into the world too uh, because of the pain that he suffered throughout his life so that's why i got checked in you know, uh, to determine, you know, whether or not I had to trade or not, and I don't. So yeah, that's a, that's, that's a huge deal. So for all of you guys who listening, listening, you know, I encourage you to just learn more information about it. Do you have a website for your nonprofit, Haley, that people can go to and learn more information? Yes, yes ma'am. www.coveredbytheblood.org. So yeah, so start with Haley's um, website that she just gave. I'll also put it in the show notes to get educated on sickle cell because we should know. We should definitely know our, our status. So on a lighter note, Haley, you got your own official day here in Houston, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that. Like, how did you get your own day in Houston? When I saw that, I was like, okay, hashtag Haley goes because... <laughs> Well, um, actually, um, our mayor, Sylvester Turner, was, um, he recognized all the stuff that I was doing in the community, and he thought that I should have my own day. So on September 29th, which is my birthday, he signed that October 15th should be Haley A. Fields Day, and at my launch party, he, my mom actually presented me with the award, and I was just so surprised and shocked that I'm like, oh, I have my own day. He's, I'm like, oh. So I was just so shocked and surprised because he didn't see that I was be I was an actress, I was a mom, and all the stuff I was doing in the community. He was just like, she's she's super young and she's already doing all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. That is amazing, girl. You know my birthday is September twenty eighth. That's why I love you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love you. We got that in common. Oh, that is amazing. Congratulations again, because you are doing some amazing things in this in this community that's going to literally impact the world. So what keeps you inspired to keep going? Because you're doing a lot and you were a sophomore in high school. Yes, right? ma'am. Let me, let me make sure people understand that, because I know she sounds really, really mature right now, but <laughs> Haley is only a sophomore in high school. So what's, what's keeping you inspired? My mother, my grandmother, because uh, my mother first is because I see all the work and effort that she puts into me and also the work and effort that she does because she wants to be able to provide me with a better life. And I want to be able to do that to them for my um, kids someday. And then my grandmother, because she was my rock, she was my best friend. And that's seeing all the support that she had for me before she passed away. And I want to continue to make her happy, even in heaven. Oh, girl, don't make me cry. You're so amazing. <laughs> Miss Grace, how much for how much for Haley? Girl, how much you want for Haley? <laughs> <laughs> I I <don't> just... know. <laughs> Depends on the day of the week. You look and you have <laughs> I just love that. I love the fact, Haley, that you are thinking about your legacy now. Because a lot of us, we wait until our 30s to start thinking about the legacy that we're going to leave. So the fact that you're thinking about it now, I just think that is just so beyond amazing. How many times am I going to say amazing in this interview? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, think it's just, I think it's so beyond amazing. So, Miss Haley... You know, yeah. Haley is pretty young right now, right? And so I feel like our children are under attack, right? I mean, because they are dealing with so many things in this world. And Haley being an African 
African American young lady, you know, she's under attack as well, right? She has a lot of things that she faced out in the world. How do you help Haley to mentally and emotionally reset after dealing with harshness in the world when she comes home so she can stay true to who she is and continue to be inspired to continue to do everything that she's doing right now? Well, we talk. We talk a lot. Um, and not just at home, but, you know, we have mother-daughter dates. Mm-hmm. And we'll go out and have dinner and we dress up and we go somewhere really nice and we sit there and we some days we talk about business. Some days we just talk about what's going on in each other's lives. And so, you know, because you'll be amazed at the questions that she has for me about my life <laughs> <laughs> and so um also I thought it was very important for her to be in therapy I'm a therapist and so Haley has a therapist um and I think in our community we have the a misconception of what therapy is and who it's for and I believe that everyone needs therapy everyone needs a therapist go to counseling and um so she has a place where she's able to just feel free to talk about anything it is that's on her mind on her heart with no judgment no bias um even if it's something that she don't want to tell me as close as we are i still feel that you know there may be something that she might struggle with telling me however she still can get it out and get help get uh assistance with her therapist and so she goes to therapy every other week and um so that's an outlet for her and in the summer, our schedule gets a little packed um, with travel and um, her doing more events. And so therefore, you know, she don't get to go to therapy, you know, every other week like she normally does. However, she will tell me, Mom, I have not went to therapy. I need to go see my therapist. <laughs> so I have to make sure I get her back on track and make that appointment because she she recognizes that, you know, she needs it too. It's her own outlet. It's her own safe place. And um, and so that's just what I do with her. I just make sure that we have an open line of communication. And I also make sure that she have a safe place where she's able to, you know, um, get it off her chest, any and everything it is that may be bothering her. Oh, my goodness for all you moms that's listening to this i'm gonna need you to just go ahead and rewind that whole last two or three minutes and really (laughs) listen to what miss grace just said i mean because she has Haley in therapy you're absolutely right there is a stigma on therapy i feel like it's getting a little better um i feel like the stigma is slowly dissipating but there's definitely a stigma on on therapy and the fact that you have Haley in therapy just so she can express herself is amazing because we tend to think that only crazy people go to therapy and that something traumatic has to happen. I'm a 100% advocate for therapy as well. I'm a survivor of sexual abuse. So that's the reason why I went to therapy was to just heal from that. But people think that they have to go through something traumatic like that in order to go to therapy and that's so far from so far from the truth i love the fact that you have you know daughter dates with Haley. my mom didn't do that now she also had you know six kids that she was raising you know in the household but to have that one-on-one time with my mom like that would have made a world of difference and i love the fact that you allow her that space and opportunity to ask you questions because our kids are exposed to so much in this world, right? Way Mm -hmm. much more than what we were, you know, um, had access to. And the fact that she can come to you and ask questions, I think that's amazing as opposed to getting answers from somebody who probably don't mean her any good. Right. You know? I just think that's amazing. I think that's amazing. And the fact that she's like, you know, mom, I need to go to therapy because it's been a while. I think that's awesome too. You know, I saw an article 
not too long ago and I said I was going to talk about it and I'm glad you brought up therapy Miss Grace because I'm have to make sure I talk about it it's an article on um Tina Knowles she talked about how she put both Beyonce and Solange in therapy when they was younger so there's no sister rivalry when Beyonce started to to blow up she put them in she put them in therapy so uh they you know, can uh, accept their own individual identities. And in the article, she talked about how people, you know, downed her for doing that. Like, why are you putting them girls, you know, why are you putting them girls in therapy? Ain't nothing wrong with those girls, you know, that type of thing. And I mean, we don't know Beyonce and Solange's business like that, but we can only assume that they have a, a pretty decent sister sister relationship. You know? Right. And who's to say that therapy wasn't um, a big part of that? So that's awesome. That's really awesome. Um, Haley, so give us a book recommendation that has inspired you or your business. Do you read a lot? I read during school. and But a book recommendation that I would do would be my book that I wrote, Haley and Gale Journey Through Sickle Cell, because it was a very, it was like therapy for me. It was, so I was able to grief while writing my book, because it was about me and my grandmother, and it was just reminding me of all the good times that we had, and that we shared, so it was pretty much therapy for me, so that would be a book that pretty much keeps me going and inspires me throughout that's, my whole time. That's awesome, that's really awesome, you know, I've coached women who still um, having a hard time writing their book, because of whatever comments or ex negative experience that they had that has causing them a mindset block so for all you inspiring authors out there take a you know take a page from from Haley and go ahead and write your book because like you say that's a part of therapy just getting your just getting your words out because you never know who you who you were blessed you know by reading your words who you were impact so yeah I know you have a story and we need for you to go ahead and write that book. So what about you, Miss Grace? Do you have a, a favorite book that you would like to share with us? Ooh. <laughs> I don't really have a favorite book. Um, now, what I normally use, uh, like to read is kind of uh, maybe so inappropriate for Haley. I okay. like uh, romance, <laughs> romance novels. Um, and one of my favorite authors is Eric Jerome Dickey. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I don't think she's ready for those type of books, mm -mm. but, <laughs> but they're, not just, they're not inspirational. They're just, you know, uh, entertainment. <laughs> hey, sometimes you need, you need an escape. And Eric, yes. Eric Jerome Dickey would definitely help you escape. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You ladies are amazing. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me on today. Miss Grace, before you go, do you have any last parting words for parents and um, just giving them some advice on how to allow their children to just really own who they are? and live purposely so they can travel along their own personal self-awareness journey? My only advice would be is to listen. Just actively listen to the things that they're saying and be very visual because sometimes um, what they're saying is not coming out verbally. Oh. You know, it's coming out through actions, it's coming out through body language and just be aware. And um, and when they do come to you and say, this is what I want to do, you know, try to be supportive in every way, even if it's something that you don't necessarily um, believe in or if it's something that you doesn't necessarily uh, feel like they, they are going to pursue you know, 100%, you know, allow them that opportunity and, um, and then go from there because a lot of times these kids will definitely amaze you. I think sometimes we reflect back on how we were as, as kids and not realizing that this generation of kids are way 
more ahead of us yeah. than where we were. And so they'll be amazed at what will come out of some of their kids if they would just listen and support it. Just mm. support, support, support. Mm. Thank you for that. You know, um, as a kid, I shared a little bit earlier, you know, I was sexually abused and it was by my stepfather. And one of the ways that, you know, I tried to act out to let somebody know that something was wrong was through my body language. I never smiled. I always frowned. You know, I always had a mean mug on my face because I felt as though that if I smile, then he would think that I was happy and I was okay with the abuse. This is what was going on in my mind. So I made sure to always have an attitude, a chip on my shoulder or whatever. So that is a good point to really listen and pay attention to your child. Because if there is a drastic um, change in their behavior, it doesn't have to be, you know, sexual abuse. It could be anything. They could be bullied at school. The teacher could have said something wrong to them. You know, Um, you just never know what it is. So really pay attention to your child, I think that is so pivotal. Um, you know, we get kind of comfortable sometimes these days, you know, with letting our kids be off on the, you know, on their phones or, you know, their tablets, the iPads and stuff like that. And we really need to take that time to spend time with our children and really like pay attention. So that's, that's a good point. Thank you for that. Yes. Haley, what about you? You have any um, final uh, parting words? For us adults, uh, my hard words would be dream big because the bigger you dream, the bigger the reality. Ooh, okay, girl. Say that one more time. Dream big, and the bigger you dream, the bigger the reality. I love that. You guys are amazing. Miss Grace, keep doing the good work that you're doing because Haley is amazing. Haley, you keep going, girl, because you're doing your thing. Thank you so much for today. Thank you.